Professional and amateur video of real events. No actors or recreations have been used. Only the actual people involved have been interviewed. These are the true stories of significant moments in their lives. Also, witness the moment that changes a young man's life forever. Help him, help him, please. Real people caught in real events, sharing their personal moments of triumph, achievement, and courage. Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to meet some remarkable people. Each of them has accomplished something incredibly unique. Whether triumphing over adversity, facing disaster, or just plain having the guts to attempt the impossible, they're all one-of-a-kind individuals, and their stories were all captured on tape. Coming up, a young man takes a risk that changes his entire life. It's a rule of life that disaster can strike when you least expect it. You could be stepping off a curb or backing your car out of a driveway. One second, life is normal and predictable. The next, it's changed forever. The story you're about to see examines the serious consequences of one risk that didn't have to be taken. And it shows just how fragile our lives can be. It's also a testament to man's ability to face disaster with courage and determination. It was August 6, 1990, my 39th birthday, and Judith and two friends of ours, um, we all went to Letra State Park and to spend the four days there. <laughs> we were having a great time that day. We were frolicking around in each other's arms and we were just going around in a circle and um, having a wonderful time. And then we came upon this uh, footbridge, and these fellows came running from, I don't know where they came from, but all of a sudden they jumped up on the footbridge and jumped in the water. We all looked at each other and thought, wow. Yeah! <laughs> all of a sudden, I'm realizing that this is going through Mark's head, that maybe he'll jump off this thing too. It seemed easy enough. It seemed like a lot of fun. So I decided this was the perfect time to go take a swim. And so I stripped down, didn't have my bathing suit on. Uh, underwear was all I had. Mark and I were standing on the bridge together. And at that time, I told Mark, keep your feet together and jump in straight. Then someone to the left of me said something, and I looked over. And Mark had jumped. Oh no. I could tell by the sound that it wasn't good. It sounded like a horrendous belly flop. Are you okay, baby? I was in terrible pain. The only thing I had on my mind was to get to the ledge, to get out of the water and get back up onto the ground. At that point, I jumped off the bridge and helped him over to the rock. Help him, help him, please. Mark kept saying, I'm OK. I'm OK. Then he changed and said, uh, I can't feel my legs. Actually, I didn't know at the time that upon hitting the, the water, I broke my back. Oh, no. And that one split second changed our lives. Are you okay, baby? The outlook um, at the time was quite clear that indeed I had spinal cord injury, that indeed I was paralyzed below the waist. And um, I was told that this is the rest of your life. You know, learn to live with it. And they're harsh words, but they have to say it. When Mark had his first day outside in fresh air, I realized that I needed to start videotaping again for Mark to see where he's come from and where he can go. Oh, I see that push-up. 
I think my role at that point also was to help make this transition be as comfortable as possible. Yeah, I mean, you can move. My next four weeks were um, aimed at gaining wheelchair independence. And what that means is being able to function in life, but with a wheelchair. All kinds of maneuvers that one has to learn to do with uh, a limited uh, body that one now has. We didn't have physical therapy today, so we're making up for it. I met Mark about a month after his accident. He was functioning from a wheelchair level. He could get himself around that way, but he hadn't begun to stand or walk at all. We started off with some general leg strengthening exercises, and then we got him in what's called long leg braces and stood him up. That was the first time that I stood up in six weeks since my injury. And uh, it's quite a sensation. Literally, they were Mark's first steps after the accident. And it was intense. It was an intense time for me to watch this. Knowing Mark from before, as I did, and then to see this, it was um, very heart-wrenching. It's really very hard when you're first doing it, and the physical therapist is there to cheer you on and tell you, great, it's great, you did great, even though you look pathetic. <laughs> but they're the ones to tell you you're looking really good. Mark definitely thought he was going to be able to, to beat this injury. He, he definitely never wanted to give up, and he always worked real hard. And it was, it was really good to see how, how much progress he'd made from when he first got to the hospital to the time when he left. My intention was to walk out of the, uh, the hospital, and I did, although it was on a walker, which is not something that you could use in real life. You can't get over things. You can't go upstairs and curbs and so forth. Tell me that you're not impressed. I'll tell you that I am impressed. Mark and I made the choice that we were going to be happy. This was a very devastating thing. We accepted that but we also knew that we, that we had to go on and we had to be happy. And happiness is survival. Uh, at home, I would shoot Mark doing his exercises, basically to strengthen his legs. And we did a lot of practicing just around the house, just getting in, in and out of the house was a big step. I was um, walking on a walker for about 10 months, slowly building up. So finally I realized, well, it's now time to try to get onto crutches, which are appreciably more difficult. It was basically just starting all over again from scratch, just like with a walker. But first, you have to learn how to get up from your wheelchair. Then, you, you know, you're taking just a few steps. And slowly you, you build up, you build up, and uh, the crutches uh, makes you infinitely more mobile. You can't go walking on trails in the woods with walkers. You can with crutches, and that was my intention all along, was to get back into the woods. August 92, two years later, after the, the rebirth day, and I am able to walk a mile in an hour. I'll throw away my crutches, and I can walk without them. One of the reasons why I guess I've been able to deal with um, <clears throat> this is because it's my own foolishness that's to blame. No one pushed me off that bridge. I jumped. And I'm able to stand on my own two feet. At the worst, it's just been a, a tremendous detour in my life, which I certainly would have had the choice of certainly would have not taken. Mark has returned twice to the bridge at Letchworth State Park. People often ask him why he would want to go back to a place with such bad memories. Well, Mark always explains that for him, it's a place of good memories because it's another step toward his recovery. We wish him all the best.